Has Israel been replaced? We know that Israel was called a special people and that they were chosen to be a holy nation. But has that actually persisted? Or maybe has it changed? For example, we might consider in Exodus 4.22, And you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahuwah, My son, my firstborn, is Israel. So we could say that at that time at least, Israel was considered his son, his firstborn. And we might also think of Exodus 19, 5 through 6. And now, if you shall surely listen in my voice, and you shall guard my covenant, and you shall be to me treasure from all of the peoples, that to me is all of the land. All of the land belongs to Elohim, and if Israel will listen in his voice and guard his covenant, they shall be to him a treasure from all of the peoples. But we know that Israel has not guarded the covenant. They did not guard the covenant. And we know they did not always listen in his voice. So we know that Israel was said to be his son, his firstborn son and that they were to be a special treasure to him from all of the peoples. They were to be a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. However, it says if they guard his covenant, which they have not. They rejected his covenant. They turned from his ways. They did not follow his commandments. They did not follow after his Torah. As a result, they broke the covenant and they were punished. They were thrown out of the land. So we might think that because they broke the covenant, which indeed they have, because they did this, that this might overturn everything that was said in the law. Something that we need to consider, though, is that the law already addresses this. The law already talks about Israel breaking the covenant and it already expects that it will take place. What does it say about this? Deuteronomy 4, 25-31 says, You shall do the evil in eyes of Yahuwah your Elohim to cause to provoke him. You shall surely perish hastily from on the land which you are ones crossing the Jordan toward there to occupy it. You shall not cause to lengthen days on it, for you shall surely be destroyed. And Yahuwah causes to scatter you in peoples, and you shall be remaining adults of count in nations which Yahuwah shall lead you toward there. And there you shall serve Elohim, work of hands of man, wood and stone." This passage basically says that they are going to break the covenant. They are going to do the evil in his eyes. They are going to provoke him and they will be punished as a result. They will not be allowed to stay in the land of Canaan. And instead, they will be thrown out of it and they will be scattered amongst the nations as they have been. And while they are there, they will be serving Elohim of wood and Elohim of stone. When all of this has taken place, does that mean that Israel is rejected? Does that mean that the covenant is thrown out? Does that mean that an entirely new system has been set up in its place? The passage continues, From there you shall seek Yahuwah your Elohim, and you shall find that you shall inquire of him in all your heart and in all your vitality. In tribulation to you, and all of these words shall find you in latter of the days, and you shall return unto Yahuwah, your Elohim. He shall not forget covenant of your fathers, which he has sworn to them. Even though the people broke the commandments, they broke the covenant, 
and they were thrown out of the land. They were scattered amongst the nations, and they were serving work of wood and stone. The covenant will still be remembered. For it says that from this place they will seek Yahuwah, your Elohim, and they will find him in a time of tribulation, in a time of difficulty. They will realize this, and they will return to Yahuwah. And despite all that had gone on before, the breaking of the covenant and all of those things, he will not forget the covenant. This same issue appears in Leviticus 26, 41 through 45, after discussing the curses that will come upon Israel for them rejecting his law. It says, Then their heart, the uncircumcised, shall be submitted, and then they shall accept their iniquity. And I shall remember my covenant of Jacob, and indeed my covenant of Isaac, and indeed my covenant of Avraham. I shall remember, and I shall remember the land. They shall accept their iniquity, because and in because they rejected in my judgments, and their vitality detested my enactments. And indeed, moreover, this in their being and land of their enemies, I rejected them not, and I detested them not, to finish them, to cause to annul my covenant with them. For I am Yahuwah, their Elohim, and I shall remember for them covenant of first ones, which I caused them to go forth. He is remembering the covenant that he made with Israel as he brought them out in the Exodus. Even though they are clearly suffering the punishment of breaking the covenant, of not following after him, of not following his law, he is still remembering the covenant. And he is doing it not just for their sake. Deuteronomy 9.6 says, And you shall know that not in your righteousness, Yahuwah your Elohim, is giving to you this good land to occupy it. So he is not doing it because of the righteousness. Why is it that he is doing it? Deuteronomy 10.15 But in your fathers... Yahuwah connected to love them, and he chose in their seed after them, in you from all of the peoples. Elohim made a covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, and he intends to fulfill that covenant still. Deuteronomy 7, 6-9 You are holy people, to Yahuwah your Elohim. In you, Yahuwah your Elohim chose to be to him to people of treasure from all of the peoples which are on faces of the ground, not from your multitude, from all of the peoples. Yahuwah connected in you, and he chose in you, for you were the few from all of the peoples that from Yahuwah loving you, and from his guarding of the oath which he has sworn to your fathers, Yahuwah caused you to go forth in fixed hand, and he ransomed you from house of servants, from hand of Pharaoh. Yahuwah your Elohim, he is the Elohim, the faithful El guarding the covenant and the kindness to one's loving him and to one's guarding his commandments to thousand generation. Yahuwah chose Israel, and Yahuwah loves Israel. And he guards the oath which he swore to their fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
He is not an Elohim that breaks his promises. Instead, he is the faithful El. And he guards the covenant for a thousand generations. And Deuteronomy 30 reiterates this, that even though Israel will break the covenant after they have broken it and been thrown out of the land and are suffering the consequences of that, they will return to his law. And it shall be that all of these words shall come on you, the blessing and the curse which I gave before you. And you shall cause to return to your heart in all of the nations which Yahuwah your Elohim caused to compel you toward there. And you shall return unto Yahuwah your Elohim, and you shall listen in his voice, as all which I am commanding you today. And you, you shall return, and you shall listen in voice of Yahuwah, and you shall do all of his commandments, which I am commanding you today. The law has already accounted for the fact that Israel is going to break it and break the covenant. The law already addresses this, and it does not say that when Israel breaks the covenant that this is just completely overthrown and that a new system has to be brought in in its place. There is nothing of that sort said in the law. Instead, in addressing Israel breaking the covenant and being scattered throughout the nations, it says that eventually they will return. Eventually they will realize what has taken place and they will return to him, return to his commandments in the Torah, and follow after him again, listening to his voice. And Elohim will remember the covenants. He has not forgotten the covenants. He has not rejected Israel to destroy them or to cause to annul the covenant. Even though they broke it, he is still remembering the covenant. The covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, and the covenant that he made as they came out in the Exodus. He is remembering that. And while none of us are probably in this exact situation, there are a lot of people out there that this is a very inconvenient truth. It is something that they are not even able to accept because they have been conditioned to think that this new system is the way, that there's this new system out there and that we need to listen to it instead. And the law is just kind of an afterthought. It's just a side issue that's not really considered. And most of the time, people aren't aware of the fact that these passages exist, of the fact that Elohim is going to remember his covenant and that he has not forgotten it. And whenever shown these passages, the only answer is that that cannot mean what it says, that it cannot be true. We need to realize that the covenant continues, that he will remember the covenant, and that the old system, the old ways, they are actually the current system, the current ways, and that we need to return to him with all of our heart and all of our vitality. We need to return to him and return to his ways, his Torah.